digitalization lead at Siemens. Thank you so much for joining us today for the second webinar in the Business Show webinar series. Um, and it is entitled Digital Evolution, Achieving Excellence in, delivery, in Digital and Delivery. Um, make sure to join in the conversation online on Twitter and on Facebook at Business Show IRL and use the hashtag Rebooting Ireland. So that's at Business Show IRL and using the hashtag Rebooting Ireland. So I'm going to kick off because we have some really brilliant speakers and you need to hear from them really and not from me. So um, I'm delighted to say I am joined this morning by Phil Codd, the Managing Director for Ireland of Explio Group, Peter Hendrick, the CEO of the National Broadband Ireland, and David Willis, B2B Digital Product Manager at Electric Ireland. So most people will know all of your organizations and have experienced them maybe in some way or another over the last number of years. Um, but I'm really delighted to join you. We've all had, in full disclosure, we've all had a bit of a chat in advance because we're very tight on time and we do want to get the most out of this. So just so that the guys all get nicely warmed up, I'm going to give them like a quick opportunity to 30 seconds to say hello, who they are, why this conversation is interesting them, and then we are going to power on. So Peter, why don't I start with you? Great, my name is Peter Hendrick, I'm CEO of uh, National Broadband Ireland. Um, we're rolling out the government's National Broadband uh, Programme across Ireland, serving over 1.1 million people, um, over 544,000 premises. And we're bringing future-proofed high-speed broadband to all those people across Ireland who don't have it today, who are limited with the with broadband speeds that are unreliable or just simply not delivering uh, what is required in today's life in terms of delivering high-speed broadband. So over the next couple of years, we'll be rolling out fibre across the country. We look forward to connecting all those people across Ireland. Peter, on behalf of all of us, particularly those of us here in the Midlands, thank you so much. I mean, I happen to have great broadband in Mullingar, but I have relatives not far out the road who have none at all. So that is great news, Peter, thank you. David, over to you. Hi, I'm David Willis, and uh, as you said, I'm the digital product manager for the business side of Electric Ireland, which means that uh, really we are trying to allow our business customers from the smallest SMEs to the largest multinationals to access all the information they need and conduct some of their transactions digitally instead of having to work through uh, people or customer relationship managers, as used to be the case where everybody had to do everything in person. So uh, really, it's about digitizing uh, of the transactions and interactions that people used to have if they wanted. David, that's great. You know I'm a massive fan of Electric Garden, so we'll, we'll come on to that bit later. But um, uh, Phil, Cod, over to you, Explio. Tell us a little bit about that for those of us who don't know, but I mean, I do, but you know, anyone else, just in case. Okay. Hi, Joan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Phil Codd. I'm the Managing Director of Explio here in Ireland. And I guess what, what we do is we help organizations meet their digital program goals by bringing methods, approaches, skills, knowledge, people, tools, know-how um, to deliver quality assurance uh, across their, their programs and projects, working with organizations uh, such as, as, uh, as National Broadband and Electric Ireland, but also other government bodies, uh, banks, insurance, uh, uh, telcos, utilities. Um, so really anyone that's that's in digital transformation where they're looking to use technology, software or, or hardware to gain some kind of benefit, speed, efficiency or, or, or connectivity or automation uh, within their business. So that's great actually, and really assuring. Um, because I think that's the really the essence of this. You, you mentioned quality assurance across projects and that's really what we talk about when we mean about digital excellence. In, in delivery and execution. So I'm gonna kick off our conversation and I'm going to start with, oh, they're looking nervous, not at all. Okay, I'm gonna start, <laughs> start with David actually. So um, I was really delighted to see that Electric Ireland were on this panel because I do and have always associated you guys with um, excellence in execution and delivery around digital. And for, for those who aren't, people who are listening in who aren't aware, the reason I associate Electric Ireland with that is because in a former life, when I used to be the CEO of the Irish Internet Association, we had our annual awards. And Donald Rice was at the time, if he's listening, he taught me well, the head of um, Centre of Excellence for Universal Design. And we had an overall award that was eligible for anybody from any business that had entered in any category for excellence in universal design. And Electric Ireland won that two years in a row. 
And I just thought that was really outstanding, given that the breadth of customers that you guys have. So everything from individual citizens, whether they're 90 years of age or a 19 year old renting a flat, whether they're a large multinational or a very small SME. Digital execution, excellence and accessibility across that breadth of customer base. That really is excellence. So David, tell us a little bit about how you guys do that. And now I've just blown your trumpet for you. You don't even have to do that. See, you can be all modest and self-effacing. Uh, thanks, Joan. And, and yeah, it, it is nice to think that we've started from a, a good base of digital excellence, but um, I suppose the flip side of that um, that I've experienced over the last few years is uh, when we went out and talked to business customers a few years ago, there was only uh, about 2% of business customers who were interested in interacting with us digitally. So it has come a huge way in the last few years in terms of the customer expectation of being able to get everything and see everything and interact with everything online. Um, and we've tried to, to both keep pace with the change in customer expectations, but also to be ahead of that and try and um, put the customer at the center of the products and services that we offer rather than uh, have an offering and say, oh, and we think this is what you want. We're letting them tell us what they want and to guide us in that. Um, and that's that's a strange at times um, process and uh, interaction with customers because sometimes we'll have designed uh, what we thought was a good service and uh, through feedback from customers and interactions with them, they'll turn that on their head. That, that happened uh, only um, a year and a half or so ago when we were offering a new product when we did uh, discussions with the business customers that were actually going to use that product, um, they completely turned around what we thought we were going to offer them. Uh, so there's, there's a little bit of you know, learning definitely from both sides and definitely the idea that what you offer has to be what the customer actually wants and to improve their, their understanding and make it easier for them to interact with. I mean, I suppose that's true of all digital products, but for a utility, you know, that's, there's a learning in that, that those products, just as uh, any non-digital product, have to be what the customer is actually looking for. That's um, a really, sorry, David, to interrupt. That's a really interesting point. Digital execution has to be digital execution of the right product, not of the wrong one. And actually, that execution in the context of this delivery, this evolutionary journey, is very much around listening to the customer and what they want. And that you know that 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 excellence is driven very much by a. And a consultative open innovation approach in terms of how we work with customers. I want, I, I noticed in the corner of my screen, Peter was nodding furiously. Peter, I guess you have no shortage of customers telling you what their expectations are of you. In fact, you possibly have more than most these days, um, a very demanding uh, role in the context of people's expectations and very high standards and expectations from you. How do you overcome that or deal with that? And overcome it, but you know, how do you manage all those expectations for delivering to that level of very high standards of excellence that is demanded of broadband? Well, we're probably on a very different um, st a different stage in our journey than, yes, than Electric indeed. Ireland. Yes, at the very uh, two ends of possibly uh, our oldest utility uh, to our newest utility uh, on this call. It's a great spectrum to have here. Absolutely, and um, I suppose for for I mean the priority right now is is people want broadband, and um, and they don't they almost don't care how they get it. Uh, they want it. So uh, I suppose our role is to make sure that we deliver it as fast and as efficient as possible. And the customer experience is is, is a good one. And, and I suppose when, when we look at the customer here, um, and we've got many stakeholders all across the country because we're rolling fiber out across effectively 96% of the landmass of the country. We've got to consider that everybody, every home or business that we passed we pass may actually affect what, what you know their, their life or their um, their business. So we, we've got to consider what we're doing and how we're tracking it from a health and safety equality and even a service delivery perspective is done with, with, the, with, the, with the customer in mind, regardless of whether they're going to connect to this net network or they're not. And that's very important during the rollout phase. And then as we move to connecting, actually connecting homes and businesses, the process in which they connect is critical and how efficient that is. So NBI are, are a wholesale operator. So a bit like ESB in terms of delivering electricity and Electric Ireland being a retailer. We actually are the wholesaler and we sell to the retail uh, broadband providers. So today we have over 40 retail broadband providers who will actually sell the service and deliver the internet service to the 
end homes and, and, and businesses. We have to make sure that the, there's an efficient process of somebody going to another retail operator's website, then placing an order and ensuring that we deliver it at the day and the time that, that they expect to get connected. And it's done in a single visit where possible. So that efficiency loop sounds simple, but when you look behind it, the, the hundreds of people uh, that are working on the software development and the testing, like interacting with, with, I mean, I would almost describe it as we're taking a digital world and we're interacting with an analog world. Analog being people, trucks, um, machinery, materials, all coming together to arrive at somebody's house at the right time to deliver the service and everything works end to end. So bringing that digital part where I place an order on a website and all the analog elements that, that are required to deliver it and make sure that it works first time, I suppose that's what we have to get right. And so far, thankfully, we, we, we've hit the nail on the head and we're starting to deliver and connect homes of broadband. And then in time, as we, as, we, as we evolve, as the business evolves, and as we start to connect more homes, innovation will drive and we'll offer new services, meeting the demand that is in rural Ireland today that's being met in urban Ireland. So the one, the one thing that we need to do is future-proof this network, that it meets all of the demands for the future, the next 25, 35 years, but is equally benchmarked with today with what people can receive in urban areas. So a lot of things to manage, most importantly, getting homes connected in the first phase. Thank you. I mean, I think that's a really important point, just the criticality of the services that you're providing. I mean, we, we know in the context of electricity and have always accepted it, it's a zero sum game. It either works or it doesn't yeah. work. You either have it or you don't. You can have good and bad broadband, but it is the criticality of it now for so many businesses, particularly we've experienced in the last 12 months, um, businesses relying on their broadband and their online services um, to be able to engage with their customers. So I do think that is, and it's something I know we mentioned the other day, just the, the risk and exposure um, for businesses when these things don't work. Phil, um, I do want, I'm very conscious of wanting to come to you now as well. I mean, you, you led by saying that what you guys do is so focused on just the quality assurance of the delivery of these large scale projects for customers who are going through their digital transformation. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe some projects that you've worked on in that sense and those challenges um, for, for business customers in assessing risk exposure as they're delivering innovation? Sure. I, I always talk about us being at the heart of the market. So the, the clients that we work with are rolling out their digital programs that are going to make a difference. Um, and I suppose one I'll pick out on is the uh, the COVID app that the HSE developed last year. Um, you know, suddenly there was a huge change in the way that procurement could take place. Um, we didn't have to go through the usual um, rigors of European uh, procurement. It all had to happen there and then. Um, and it brought together a, you know, a number of, of disparate players. Uh, you had the government, uh, we were involved uh, to provide the quality assurance. Um, the software developer uh, was, uh, was there. Uh, there was a security company. So they all had to come together and work almost instantly. And, and it, it was instant because I, I got a call on the Saturday afternoon from uh, the, the CIO's office for the government. And by Monday morning, we had a team stood up. Um, and I think, you know, with, with digital, everybody thinks that it, it can all be done instantly and you don't have to do any of the usual governance. Uh, the fact is you still have to have that governance, but it can, it can operate at a much uh, higher pace. Um, you can do things in a much more agile way, um, both from an IT point of view, but also organizationally. Um, so the, the key thing was that, that, you know, this was seen, if you remember at the time, as, as being part of the defense mechanism for, for uh, the fight against COVID. So when it went live, when it was released um, into uh, the Google Store and the Apple Store, um, it had to work. It had to work first time. It had to be uh, efficient. And, you know, on the day, I, I, I think there was, there was 150,000 downloads within the first few hours. That all had to happen. Um, because if it, if it didn't happen that way, then everybody would have pointed to the HSE and to the government and said, you failed. So, you know, that, that, that kind of failure was public. So the, the amount of effort that was put in to make sure the software worked first time was hugely critical. And the delivery of that software was something that, you know, on the team that we had working on it with everybody else, um, everybody was so proud of, the, of what they'd achieved. And it was that 
change in the way that all these organizations that typically would have you know worked um, uh, apart and come together for the one meeting you know there were stand-ups every day maybe twice a day so it was a completely different way of, of delivering a critical program uh, to uh, to the nation I think that I, I love that story actually um, and I'd be aware uh, of, of some of it and there was so many false dawns i suppose in other countries and i don't want to talk about covid particularly but in relation to you know covid tracking apps and stuff like that and then the guys um i remember chairing a panel one day with uh connor o'neill from your form and garma christer from the hse and i said guys who would play you in the movie i mean it was positively heroic what happened at the time <laughs> and to know that you guys were part of that story as well there were so many people involved but i think what's really interesting Thing about it is you said there was multiple stand-ups during the day as opposed to standoffs which is often what happens in such in these kind of projects and I think the real learning was and as we as businesses who are listening in today to this um is that we have governance that exists and it's really really important but maybe we have governance for an old world and actually the kind of governance that we have to have for the speed of delivery that is required of us now is that we can be more agile in terms of how we deliver. The culture around um, delivering perfection versus in, in a digital world where we're offering releasing in beta mode. Um, so the world has very much changed, not only in terms of the products that we're delivering, but the nature in which we will deliver them. Now, Obviously, we can't deliver a beta version of electricity, but that's not really what Electric Ireland do. So you guys are you guys are providing a service for business, not the electricity itself, but the service around that in a lot of ways and the kind of products that you're innovating on. David, do you want to talk to us that way? And, and I think it's interesting just in the context of Peter, I guess you're not going to get to deliver the, the hybrid version, the beta version yet. But but David, from a utility perspective, beyond the electricity, what's the real service value there that digital is allowing you or how it's allowing you to engage with your customers? I, I think you're you're absolutely right in saying that most customers, be they consumers or, or, or businesses, aren't really interested in the electricity. I mean, it's a given, it's assumed that uh, they're getting their electricity and it's reliable and it's exactly uh, as expected. So it's beyond that then, well, what, what are they using the electricity for? And um, can we give them a sense of understanding of, of you know, when they get a bill uh, at the end of the month, where has that electricity gone and what have they used it on? And is there anything they could do perhaps to reduce the amount of electricity? I mean, this is even more uh, uh, appropriate over the last year or so, but, but prior to that as well, uh, businesses have really in the last few years stepped up the idea that they don't just want to pay for electricity they want to pay for only the electricity that they need to use so there's this press for kind of sustainability and and energy efficiency but also an understanding of um where that energy is going and what are they using it on and um, so with, like we have a few products uh, around that but particularly something that we saw was that um, smaller and medium businesses can't afford to have some expert come out and uh, tell them all of the, the different things that they could be doing around energy efficiency. So a digital product that was um, for each individual customer, giving them advice that was specific to their business and an understanding of where their energy was being used and maybe how they compared to other similar businesses seemed like a, 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 an appropriate fit for them, which is something that we've provided for the last couple of years. But it doesn't stop, uh, as the guys will certainly uh, test, it doesn't stop when you deliver that. You then have to keep improving on that as well. And, and as we alluded to earlier, listening to the customers so that when they say, well, you're not talking to me in language that I understand, then you have to alter that language or um, you're not showing me in a graphical enough way what's going on, then you have to alter the graphics of what you're showing them. So um, I suppose that's that's something that we've particularly focused on over the last couple of years, understanding where the energy is going and trying to give the customer a hand in using less of that product. Counterintuitive as that might seem, you know, you use less of our product. And um, it is something that is that is increasingly valuable to say, well, actually, we're only using the right amount and not wasting any of the energy that's being provided. I think that's a really lovely point. Um, and it's it's showing how business models are changing. And um, because 
as you say, it is counterintuitive to say, here's an application that we have developed that helps you buy less from us. You know, but it's what, what are the, what, what is the business model and how is it shifting and how is it changing? Um, and that when you say, well, actually, I, I'd rather buy, a, I, I'm happy to pay for a service that allows me to make better decisions about what electricity I consume and I'll pay for that. And that offsets the less that they're paying in the other. But also you mentioned too the importance of sustainability um, and that being at the core of everything that we're doing um, as you know, just in terms of government strategy um, and, and what is required. Um, Peter, you're definitely familiar with the challenges of balancing the needs of government strategy and the needs of yeah. what, you're, what you're trying to, to achieve um, and the national broadband rollout. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I know you can't talk about the policy per se, but you know, so many people listening here, we're talking about digital evolution. And as opposed to revolution, this has been a, this is a slow burn process and, and you're rolling out at pace now, but you know, you're doing it within changing governments, changing priorities constantly, and you're nodding. So I'm going to say less and just let you make that where you wish. It, it's a fine balance, I think, between evolution and revolution. Um, if I think back a number of years, I'll go back 20 years ago, um, you know, I worked for, for Siemens and we were trying to sell all sorts of technology um, to enterprises at the time, which was bringing mobile, fixing mobile together and talking about, um, you know, one platform, you know, bringing video, for example, uh, to both fixed and mobile. And, you know, th this technology has been around for a long time. So I would say revolution, probably not, not the case. However, the demand for bandwidth in terms of use, using them uh, has certainly increased drastically in the last in the last 18 months. Um, so today, you know, if I look at the expectations, it is high. I mean, we're looking at 500 megabits per second as the minimum speed across the entire national broadband network. So we're talking about effectively the majority of people in Ireland having access to truly high speed uh, fiber broadband over the next five uh, plus years. And that's both in terms of urban and, and rural areas. So that there's, there's definitely a major shift in, and Ireland is certainly leading leading that. But I think it's it's clear that we needed it. We definitely need to do it. And then we go back to talking about what David has talked about with, with sustainability and a utilization of, of services and electricity and utilities. You know, it's certainly changing. The way we live is changing. So whilst David, Electric Ireland are looking at the sustainability of electricity, they know the demand is going to increase. So as soon as we start plugging our cars in uh, at home, we know we're going to start consuming more electricity. So how do you get how do you get the maximum efficiency out of that? How do we look at renewable energies in the in the broadband world? Slightly different. We're, we're saying we know the demand is going to increase equally. Now our, our model is slightly different in that that and it's always been the case in terms of broadband. Your speeds go up and your price stays at the same, and um, to a degree. And and what happens then is we have to we have to ensure that we're an efficient organization, as is any organization. So digital is 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 clear how we how we deliver our services. And ensuring the customer gets the right service, the right time, and it's sustainable without any failure. No, nobody, nobody accept, accepts a failure anymore. You know, there's no such thing as being offline. We're, we're online 24 seven, and therefore nobody accepts that, oh, my broadband is down or my electricity is down. It's almost unheard of. And I think that's the future we're going to live in. So making sure that we can manage, monitor, and deliver those networks in a digital world, whereby customer gets the best service and a, and a most efficient uh, um, delivery, I think is, 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 is clear. And, and an, uh, our role in terms of the rolling at the NBP is to ensure we can deliver that. I mean, the, the, the years of building utilities where you'd have thousands of people maintaining and delivering services are gone. Otherwise, the prices we'd be paying for broadband in, in 10 years time could be a thousand euros a month. And, that, and that's where it was traditionally. I mean, yes. when I left when I left Siemens and I set up a telecoms company, we were charging a thousand euros a month for, for, for 10 megabits per second, because that's we what- would it, never, We would never do anything like that in Siemens. <laughs> that, that's the one, it, was, it was our own telecoms business, but that, yeah. that's, where the, that's where the price point was because the cost of delivery and the cost of inter, international interconnects um, for, for internet connectivity. And that's come down a thousand percent. And, and is continuing to fall, but the demand for bandwidth is always increasing. So whilst the price comes down for delivery, the demand goes up. So the, the, the market right now is, is, is stable from a price perspective. We need to keep that going for the future. 
so I think that's, um, I'm conscious of time and I want to come back to Phil because actually following David and Peter have both talked, I suppose, about um, the evolution versus the revolution. And I suppose, um, and, and you're, you're both enjoying, you know, a growth in demand as you say, we start plugging in all our cars and we've got all these data centers and the demand for broadband is constantly increasing. It's also driving a huge amount of regional development, particularly over the last year, because now all of those things can be located anywhere. So um, the, the demands on the network at, at the outer edges and to go back to my lovely friend, Donald Rice talked to me, told me always in universal design, if you design for the extremes, you will catch everybody. And that, that is universal design. Design always for the extremes, and then it will be accessible to everybody. But Phil, you're in a, you're not providing a, a national utility in that sense, but I am very, and I am, there's not even a but, it's more, I'm really interested in how you see demand um, from Irish businesses for digital transformation. Because for you, are you experienced with customers an evolution or a revolution? Has it been a case in the last maybe 12 months or how you see the future? Is it, are people now really looking at the opportunities that digital can provide to totally change their business model or whether or not the technology is forcing their business model to change? What are you experiencing with your customers and what are the challenges that you guys have in, in dealing with that? I think overall we're seeing a massive uh, increase in the demand. And it is across all levels. It's not just at major corporates. Uh, last year, as part of the business show and, and the reboot in Ireland, uh, we put up a, a fund of 100,000 euros to help organizations uh, with their digital programs. And uh, we got great response uh, from small manufacturers that wanted to look at new markets and how would digital help them with that. Uh, we had pharmaceutical companies that were looking at efficiencies. Uh, we had charity organizations who were looking at new revenue streams because suddenly you know the the uh, the ability to stand on the street corner with your with your box and 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 get cash into it was no longer there you could do it digitally um <laughs> e even if if we looked at uh, one of them which i, I kind of liked was um, some of the churches that use streaming services for uh video uh, the concern was that at christmas because everybody was going to pile in from all around the world that their their video stream ser services weren't going to stay up so we got involved in in uh, in making sure the performance of that was was okay so you know it is digital all the way through from from grassroots sme and i think people have to be be brave around what they want to do and um, you know we do talk about planning and if you you know if you fail to plan you pl plan to fail that's still true but we can fail quicker um, we don't need to get to the end point to discover actually what we've done is, isn't going to be uh, uh, deliver the, the, the benefits we thought. Um, we can try things. Uh, innovation is, is really the buzzword of the day where companies are happy to, to try things. Um, you know, Peter mentioned MVP there um, as, you know, the minimal viable product that they're going to produce um, is going to be 500 megabits a second. Um, that's the minimum that, that they're looking to achieve, which is f phenomenal. Certainly, uh, again, I, I, I'm a rural liver, so I get 50 at the moment and I'm happy with that. But 500 sounds wonderful. Um, and we see it, you know, again, I, uh, you know, which is personal experience. I, I'd gone to my GP last week. Um, now my prescription arrives in my my pharmacist so when i get to the pharmacist it's already delivered and that's been enabled by some very simple technology people being brave and people starting to trust technology more and more and i think um, so, a lot of, sorry Phil, but a lot of things that we were told couldn't be done that, that that actually what the last 12 months has forced us going well it actually it could be done you for some reason or other people decided they weren't doing it because it there were rules i remember being in my own GP Please, well, not my current, but when I lived in Dublin, and I said something about, well, can you email it to me? We don't have email. I'm going, what? We can't. We can't. GDPR. We're not allowed email. I'm going. You no, know, no. GDPR is not an excuse to or to offer bad yeah. service. But now everything that couldn't be done, we've been through this time warp in the last twelve months, where it's forced businesses to say, actually, well, what we thought couldn't be done or would be too hard or too long or too difficult, is now the only option. And, and it's kind yeah. of for people to be innovative. And I love how this is bringing us back around to where we started actually with David, which was around, well, you developed a product and then you brought it to your customer and they wanted it kind of different. And you're going, oh, okay, go back to the drawing board. 
and that iterative process, that failing fast, and that being much more consultative with our with our customer base in terms of understanding what they really need and being able to deliver that faster, more timely for their sake, but also for our own, it, it is actually more efficient for ourselves in terms of how we deliver it. So, so Phil, obviously that, that's been, um, that's certainly been your experience and, and you led with that as well on the, on the COVID tracking app. It's, you know, we, digital has allowed us to break down barriers but it's not the technology, it's actually the mindset. And again, Phil, when you opened this entire discussion and I asked you to talk a little bit about your organization, you actually mentioned people and culture and organization at that. The technology is not what's enabling, it's, it is enabling us to a way, but, but it's only as good as the people who are working on it, their imaginations, their courage, their attitudes to risk. Um, so, so all of those things are the bits that will determine the excellence because the excellence measure is not whether or not the technology is working. It's actually whether or not it's the right technology for that problem. Anyone is allowed to disagree with me with one minute to go. Um, I think if <laughs> I'd like to actually just give and maybe each of you, we started with 30 seconds for each of you. If you, anyone wants, if, Peter, we'll start with you again, a, a 30 second wrap up from your perspective, and, and then we'll come back around to David with the final word um, via Phil, and then we're, and then Great, Peter. great John, John, I think you could have finished it for all of us there. I mean, I, I, think, I think risk appetite is, is, is totally key here. If I look at the government's national development plan for 2040, and all of the ambitions that we have, we have a real opportunity in Ireland to, 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 to lead globally in terms of our innovation and that digital transformation. The NBP is critical to that, bringing connectivity across the country, but it's only the first step. And it is the partnership between um, bus the business community, semi-states and the government to ensure that we get that, that agile development process up and running. I mean, we see it across other areas. You look, at, you look at SpaceX, for example, they operate like a software business. You know, they're putting rockets up every two weeks because they want to fail faster. But, the, but it really comes down to the risk appetite risk appetite of your stakeholders, the government, your shareholders, your board, your executive and your employees. I think getting that balance right, Ireland can absolutely lead here globally. Thank you. And I love how we're going to space on our final comments from Peter. So uh, no holes barred there. Phil, <laughs> your, 30, that, your 30 I, second wrap. Very quickly, I think the, the, the change that we've seen has got to be uh, across an entire organization. Uh, we've got to see changes at board level. Uh, I'm a big fan of making sure we have uh, CIO representation at boards, which many companies don't have today. But it is the culture, it is the people. And if you look at the demographic of most of the companies we work with today, we've, you know, a, a high number of young people in that kind of uh, 20 to 35 space who are coming from that generation of this has to happen. This is what we want. This is how it works. Um, to, to kind of people at, at, at my level um, who kind of been through it all, but probably, you know, maybe exit at the other side soon enough. Um, but that, that ubiquitous understanding of what we can deliver from the digital programs that we set out is down to the culture and to the people, as you said. We couldn't work from home if we wasn't for the people. The technology does it, the electricity, the, the broadband, but it's, it's the people and the willingness. And that's something we've seen across the whole of Ireland, I think, in the last 12 months. Great. Um, and to some of my favorite people that I've worked with over the years, David, Electric Ireland, your final comments. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with the, uh, anything the other guys have said. Um, I suppose, to me, digital excellence is uh, very like customer service excellence. It's not really about scrums and sprints and minimum viable product. The customer isn't interested in that. It's about trust and understanding customer needs and listening to the customer when they when they try to tell you what they want. It's about listening to that and actually you know, changing your product to what they want, not trying to change them to uh, what you're producing. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably about uh, um, excellence in, in all forms of kind of customer service is, is the same in, in that respect. Um, a little bit of trust and uh, being objective with the customer instead of trying to sell them things uh, goes a long way. I think David, that is for me like the perfect word to end all of this on any, and I could see Peter and Phil nodding. And it's strange that it's taken us 30 minutes to describe excellence in one word, which is trust. 
you know, and and that's really what excellence is, I suppose, for all of us is that this it, it is excellent. I know it's excellent because I trust these people, because I trust this service, because I trust them with my data. I trust them with execution and I and I trust that it's going to deliver me what I want. And that's really the, the point of all of this. So I'm actually personally really thrilled that that is that is the, the final, I think, core message out of all of this in terms of defining excellence but the three of you have just been fantastic and it's been such an interesting conversation i have loved the opportunity to to meet with you all to talk with you all and uh peter as a it was really super i didn't realize until we met that you were you were a former siemens person as well so uh, i'm only a rookie i've only been there two years a lot of people there have been a lot longer than me but um and of course the very first CEO of Electric Ireland was also a Siemens employee. So, yeah. so there you go. We've all come full circle. Oh, wow. um, and we've called, come full circle on this conversation. So thank you uh, to, to Phil, to David and to Peter for joining us in the conversation. But thank you for everybody who's listening in today. And um, be sure to register for the Business so Show Virtual Summit taking place on April the 22nd, where you'll get to hear over 60 speakers covering topics from everything from leadership and agility, international trade, entrepreneurship and investment. And you can register for that online on thebusinessshowireland.com. So again, thank you everybody and look forward to talking to you again soon.